Hey, welcome to Mike the Baptist. I'm Mike the Baptist. That's Jason Riccardi across the table from me. He's also a Baptist. He's a Baptist as well. I am. Not in your official title, but you are. Good to have you. It's good to be here. Either way. And that's H.D. Jones the Baptist over there. We're all Baptists here. But listen, if you tuned in and you're expecting a straight-up Baptist program, we kind of color outside the lines a little. Uh, there might not even be any lines we're trying to color there in. There may not be a line, and I hope there's not, because uh, it's not just for Baptists anymore. I just made that up. What do you think? This is an ecumenical show. It sure is. And <laughs> also, uh, we'll look that up later. But anyway, we're glad you tuned in if you did. If you didn't, it doesn't matter, because you're not hearing this anyway. But anyway, we're glad you're here. <laughs> www.mikethebaptist.com is the website. You're you heard it here in. first. If you're not listening, he doesn't like you. No, 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 no. If you heard it, if you didn't hear it, I, anyway. <laughs> Comments at MikeTheBaptist.com. Send us an email. We were going to do a front porch visit uh, uh, this episode uh, where we had deacons from my church on a text chain. I'm on with them. I was going to have them ask anonymous questions, and I was going to relay those, relay those questions to you guys or me or whoever they wanted to ask. But I didn't get that set up exactly right, uh, mainly because here at Red Oak Sound, uh, we're too cheap to buy fancy cameras. So one of my main cameras is over there being used as a camera. It's also my main phone, which has all my texting capabilities on it. So we'll, we'll have that ready for you next time. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. And it's going to be called Anonymous Something. Also, in the near future... <laughs> Is that a working title? <laughs> it's in works. In, in the near future, we're also going to start having, on occasion, a, uh, a token layperson. You know, in churches, somebody who's not officially licensed as a preacher or whatever, they call them a layman, right? Yeah. Uh, so, I've, thought, I've often thought it'd be nice to have someone join us once in a while who's, who's not a licensed preacher or... Uh, Anything like that. They're just, you know, they're just a person that likes to talk, a token lay person. And we have settled on our first one uh, uh, that we're going to have, and we're going to have her soon. Her name is Lana. Mm. Oh, that'll be interesting. Lana is uh, talkative. She's two trips. She's two trips. And uh, you'll experience them both on one episode if you'll tune in. That's coming up pretty soon. I've already cleared it with her. She said, okay. It took her a minute to say, okay, but. She's going to do it, so that's coming up soon. Today on the front porch with Jason and HD, uh, I thought it might be interesting to talk about things that uh, you've set on fire and burned up. There's something funny about uh, men or women, just anybody, either accidentally catching something on fire or doing it purposefully or just burning stuff up. Also, that this could be something that you've torn up. There's something funny about some of that stuff too. So, and if you if it's something you tore up and then burned up, that'd be even better. I don't know where this is going to go, but as soon as I mentioned that, uh, I looked across the table and uh, my friend HD had this uh, <laughs> possum look on his face. You're welcome. Like, uh, yep. So, I think we should just start there with H and see what he has to tell us. Tell so, us. So, back in the day, I was probably 16 or 17. Some friends of mine decided we we're going to have this big camp out in the woods. And we we're going to build this big bonfire and we we're going to do all this stuff. So um, I needed some straw to sit around the fire so we could sit on some hay bales and just be real country, right? So I had to borrow the straw from one of my dad's uncles. And we go out here and we clear this place off and we build this nice fire and roast our hot dogs or whatever well we got to i don't even know how we got into this situation but somebody rode their dirt bike over to the house and he was chasing us on the dirt bike i mean you could just hear him laughing hey, 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 hey. he's trying to like run over you and we dart out of the way i mean like it's just really stupid fun well we took our attention off the fire and we looked back and all 10 of those bales of straw are on fire and now it is caught the woods on fire and leaves are burning and i am mad i am so mad because i'm like we're fixing to have to call the fire department and we're going to be in big trouble so we're out there you know stomping on this stuff and slinging dirt trying to put this i mean 
of course, most of my friends are just standing around laughing, and I'm. Uh, that was probably one of those moments when I was not a Christian trying not to cuss. I was probably throwing every word I knew <laughs> at them, like, come over here and help me, you big dingleberries. And uh, so we, uh, we, finally, we finally got the fire put out, and then I had to go explain to my dad why half the woods looked charred. And then I had to go explain to his uncle, uh, we don't have your straw anymore. Uh, so, yeah, we... Uh, it may have been the last time we were allowed to do anything fun on the Jones Plantation. That's, I was going to say, that was out yep. of your place out yep. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if it had been somebody else's place, I'd have been laughing too. But no, yeah. this is my my dad's place, so, right. you know, we're fixing to burn everything to the ground. It was did bad. you stay out there the night? Did you camp? I think we did. Yeah, I think we did. I don't remember. It was too much trauma. <laughs> Are you, that, is that uh, that's, that's good enough. Yeah, go ahead. Jason, do you have a burn something down story? <clears throat> I'm sure you do. Well, I mean, I, I did apparently set my toy box on fire when I was a little kid, but that's <laughs> we're not telling that story this time. Um, well, wait a minute. Why not? I mean, there's, there's not a whole lot to the story. Okay. Uh, I was playing with matches. My parents came in. I apparently had lit one, and then when they walked in, I tossed it in my toy box. <laughs> That's a good story. And then a little while later, it was uh, it was smoking, and they're like, "Where's that smoke coming from?" Well, apparently, Jason threw matches in the toy box, and and uh, I was not allowed to be at home alone anymore <laughs> after that for a little while. Oh well, yeah. So I had to go to a babysitter, and that led to some interesting babysitters. And yeah, anyway, um, <laughs> good times. <laughs> But the, the one I want to tell is when we moved to a house in Central Texas and the people that had lived there before, just to give you an idea, we did a whole lot of remodeling inside of the house because it was just not in good shape. It would have actually in the end been cheaper if we had just bulldozed a house and started over. That's how bad it was on the inside. So that gives you an idea of like what the barn was like outside of the house. And so we get there and Man, we're, we're doing all sorts of cleanup in there. There's all sorts of seed on the ground, uh, probably stacked a foot high, at least all the way throughout the barn, not taken care of, just seed laying on the ground, open on the floor. There was a, a raccoon rolled up in carpet hanging from the ceiling. Uh, I'm not sure what that was about. Uh, there was... Alive? Uh, no, dead. Okay. Like, they rolled it up in the carpet and then put the carpet and hung it from the ceiling. I don't know. This just gives you an idea of the type of people that had owned the house before That's us. That's bizarre. Yeah. And uh, so there's there's that. There was an old fridge from like the 50s, a, a truck tailgate from probably the 30s, 40s. Something. I mean, all kinds of weird stuff. We weren't sure what we were going to see. Well, when we first started cleaning out, do you guys know what a nutria is? Huh? Um, big rat. It, it's a, basically a like a big beaver rat looking thing hmm. and their teeth are actually orange it's pretty crazy so we thought it was a rat and it that thing was in the barn living his best life and he took <laughs> off and we i mean that, that thing was several feet long i mean just an enormous rat living really well and so <laughs> as we're as we're cleaning this up one of the ways that we we finally got to the point where we're like this is just not going anywhere so my dad got a tractor and he kind of pushed all of the stuff inside the barn into this big uh pile and he told us to go into the house so we go into the house and he set it on fire and he's on the tractor making sure nothing's gonna burn down and he had cut a a gray dirt track around it so it wouldn't spread doing all those things well we're in the house and we hear this massive explosion i mean it, it was rocking the windows and so we take off outside and come to find out that uh something in there had been combustible inside of the the burn pile and it it knocked my dad off of the tractor like blew him into the air about 10 feet in the air and and several 10 15 feet away from the tractor and he landed on the ground and yeah so that was that was my childhood that's pretty exciting yeah it was good times and i've never heard of that big rat thing before. yeah check them out they they got orange teeth man they they and the reason their teeth are orange is because they actually have like iron in their teeth is it just me or is every episode we moved to this house or we moved, moved to, a lot yeah. we like, did move witness a lot. protection or you know the irs <laughs> well, looking you, for you you weren't what? supposed to know that there was a time that uh <laughs> we had a helicopter land in our front yard when we lived in Colleen because that's a story for another yeah. day. So interesting. Yeah. It's like it's like you, you're, you're like a well of stories. <laughs> of useless you just, information. You drop the bucket down on chain, then you pull it back up, and there's another new story there. 
Yeah. That's good. Yeah. It's fun. Okay. All right. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I was actually going to tell a boring story about lighting some trash bags uh, with gasoline. Mm hmm. But that's just boring compared to what I just thought about while we were talking about that. I had an old Lincoln Town Car. I don't know if I've told you guys this before or not, but I had an old Lincoln Town Car. They called it the mayor's car around church. It was this huge boat-looking old Lincoln Town Car, light blue. I loved it because it was just huge. You could just, just float in there, spread out, drive, get 12 people They in did there. ride really oh, smoothly. It rode great, but anyway... I drove it too long. It was just about to fall apart, but I just I hated to get rid of it. Uh, but toward the end of its life, the steering column, something happened in the steering column, and I like to fix things. So <laughs> I went to a salvage yard, and I bought a steering column off of one. And I worked for a couple of days, and I exchanged the steering column out, and it worked. Surprise, surprise. So I, I kept it and aggravated people a little while longer with it before I finally got rid of it. But so at that time, I had this pile of stuff I would keep out uh, under a tree out behind my house of things that I was going to load on a trailer at some point and haul to the local dump. Uh, and I would wait till I got because you pay by the pound out here. Uh, it's not like Arkansas where you just find a holler and back up. You know, you go to this place and you pay by the pound. So I I would save it up till I get enough. Well, I put the old steering column on top of that pile of stuff. And I'm out there one day thinking, you know what, this, you pay by the pound at the dump. I'm thinking this would be cheaper if I burnt all the, this stuff, all the plastic and wood and stuff off of these metal things and it just, just left a little bit of ashes and metal. So I poured some fuel around on that pile of stuff and got it burning. And then just went on about my business. I'd go out there and look every once in a while. Everything's fine, no problem. That evening sometime, I'm sitting in the recliner in my living room. And it's about dusk. It's beginning to get dark outside. I'm just watching TV. The wife and I were just casually watching TV. And I hear, boop! And it's like out my front window. It's like the this part of the neighborhood kind of had a flash of light <laughs> when that thing went, boop! I thought, what in the world? And I get up and go, look, well, evidently an airbag in the steering wheel of an old Lincoln Town Car will explode when exposed to heat. And that thing had to explode it. I'm, I'm serious. It lit the trees up out here on this end of the little cul-de-sac I'm on. And the sound was just like, it was incredible, the noise. But... So anyway, that was my accidental fire. That old car, by the way... Uh, I had a neighbor who was uh, part of the Jehovah's Witness gang, and uh, he had asked me several times, what are you going to do with that old Lincoln Town car? Plant flowers in it because it's growing into the ground? I don't know. <laughs> he he said, tells me one day, he says, I've got this group of people from up in Kentucky somewhere. He said, they'll take your old car if you want to give it to them, then they'll go scrap it and take the money, you know. And, well, sure, just tell them come get it. It's fine. If they'll, if they'll haul it off, they can have They came one day with a car hauler trailer and they winched it up on there and drove off out of my driveway and me waving them said no problem just you know hope you get a little cash out of it a few months later one of those people came back to my house and said the transmission's out on that car <laughs> and i just recall looking at him and thinking yeah probably is but so anyway isn't that interesting yeah let me see if you give them a little money for it sorry Okay, well, that's the end of these exciting stories, and I hope you were uh, thrilled like we were uh, as we were telling them. If there are any uh, miners listening, don't do as we have done. Do not try probably any of the things mentioned yep. right here or ever yeah. <laughs> ever mentioned here. We're just, we're just wanting to be examples for... for There's examples of things you should do. This is not one of those episodes. <laughs> Usually not. Okay, we'll take a break, come back, talk about some more serious stuff. Who said faith has to be boring? Could it be that you can be a Christian and have a little fun? Well, of course you can. And we're here to help with our full line of Mike the Baptist t-shirt, hoodies, and onesies in a bunch of different designs featuring the Locust logo and familiar saying from the program. And with a great variety of colors, we're pretty sure you can find what you need to complete your summer wardrobe just in time for summer. Visit MikeTheBaptist.com and click on merchandise. MTB clothing is high quality and comfortable. 
And with each purchase, you're helping keep Mike the Baptist program on the air and spreading a bit of good news to people who may not get it any other way. Plus, you're helping us show others that being a Christian isn't quite as boring as it sometimes may seem to the world around us. Visit MikeTheBaptist.com and click on Merchandise and order your MTB apparel today. They make great gifts, too. And check out our logo coffee mugs in left and right-handed 11 or 15 ounce. Thanks again for supporting Mike the Baptist, and thanks for helping us spread a bit of good cheer and good news. We're just Christian. Try not to cuss. Hey, we're back. Jason, what's fascinating about the Bible? Tell us something fascinating. Fascinating about the Bible. But you, not, not specifically book learning fascinating, but something that you find just fascinating about it. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people hesitate to interact with the Bible because they're intimidated by the the size of it and, and words that maybe we don't typically use in our read it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, but it's it's really kind of funny if you if you spend some time reading it, there's some stuff in there that it's not necessarily PG. Uh, I mean it's it's not yeah. it's not a kid's story. Uh, not all of them in there are good and um, just good descriptions, stuff that you read by the campfire when your toddler children are next to you. So there's some really interesting things in there, some really funny things in there. And I guarantee you that if you spend some time reading in it, uh, you'll find some stuff that's just pretty funny. One of the things I think that's interesting, we've been in First Thessalonians uh, chapter 3 and 4 this week. And one of the things that Paul does in that passage of Scripture is he's encouraging a group of people by sending somebody to do life with them. And I think there's something really powerful. You, you've you mentioned in previous episodes, the ministry of presence is a big thing. You go to funeral homes to just be there. Uh, the book of Job is all about Job's friends who do some stupid stuff later on. The best thing they did was show up and shut up. You just, just be there with people. And one of the words in the Bible that is used repeatedly, it's one word in the Greek language, but it's you know it's translated as one another. And there's at least 100 times in the New Testament where it does that, and at least 59 of those are commands to do something specific with one another. And so I think there's a lot to be said for the encouragement of doing life with other people, not trying to do it isolated from others. Because if you're isolated from somebody else, um, you just have a tendency to be getting your own head, start thinking things, uh, see boogeymen everywhere rather than you know reality as it actually is. And you can kind of convince yourself of a lot of things that may or may not be true. But if you have somebody doing life with you, you're more encouraged. Your your thinking is corrected by others. It's sharpened by other people. And life is just generally better when you do life together. And I. How is it that you guys have discovered encouragement by doing life with other people? Well, I think just realizing that you're not out there by yourself. And it, it can be the most simple thing. I had kidney stones a few years ago. And, I mean, it was just painful. It was difficult. And I didn't know everybody else that had that. But as soon as I said I've, had, I've got to deal with kidney stones, it was amazing the number of people that came started telling me their story. And, you know, you're like, okay, so, you know. I'm not the only person that deals with this. And I think that's part of it. And especially when it comes to the Christian life, you know, just because you become a Christian doesn't mean your life is easy and doesn't mean everything turns out the way you want it to. And I think when we get together and share our stories with one another, it helps us. Uh, we got a set of friends. They always like to get together with us because they say we make them feel better about themselves. <laughs> um, but in some ways it does. I mean, you know, you, you start going, okay, so – my kids aren't the only crazy kids and we're not the only couple that fight about you know did you put the seat up or put the seat down and so i think some of that stuff is just really important um and good a good reminder you know uh, especially reminding of scripture because sometimes we forget that the bible is written to us and uh, just sharing that with each other kind of i think helps application especially i don't think people were designed to be by mm. themselves at all Mm-mm. I mean, it's just like, other. If, if you were, you wouldn't be social, mm. and you want to talk to other people, so I think we're just designed that way. Yeah. I did a wedding recently, and 
in Genesis chapter 2, it's the second book of the Bible, and I referenced how God's design for us as individuals is not to do life separate from one another. If God wanted us to be – you got to reject a phone call off of your uh, – oh, you accepted the Did phone call. It? <laughs> They're there? Yep. Oh, they hung up. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the fun parts about doing. Uh, yes, it is doing it with a live uh, phone. Okay. okay. Anyway, in Genesis chapter two, um, he's calling back. <laughs> That's okay. I'll call uh, him. Chad Lewis. Yeah. I don't know Chad. He knows you. He's called twice now. Yeah, I'll call him back. Okay. Good times. Go ahead. So in Genesis chapter two. One of the things that God does in that chapter, in Genesis 1, God creates man in God's image, and that's just part of it. He's breathed the life into man. Man is made in his image. There's no sin in the world. Everything should be good. And then in Genesis chapter 2, one of the things that God does is he parades these animals in front of Adam. And Adam has the opportunity to name the animals. Everything's going really well. But I wonder at some point in time if he began to realize that I'm, I'm naming all these things, and nothing else is really like me. And I wonder at one point in time when it began to, the realization began to set on him, I'm just different. There's nobody like me, and the loneliness begins to set in. And so what God did is he prepared Adam for, hey, look, man, you're very different. God showed Adam his need for relationship with other people. And then when God showed Adam his need for a relationship with other people, that was when Eve came in on the picture. And so he was super excited and ready to accept the gift that God had given him because God had shown him his need. And I think that's us. Sometimes we forget that we were made for a relationship. We weren't made to do things alone. Um, I used to love to work out alone. I used to love to go to the gym alone because I couldn't find somebody that – uh, would match my pace, match what I wanted to do, and, and work out hard. You know, they they end up talking too much. But now that I've gotten older, I love working out with my wife. Like we'll go to the gym, and it, it's I enjoy that. I used to love to read my Bible alone by myself because when I would do that, I would be more in tune with what Scripture was saying to me. It's quiet, removing all distractions, but. As I've gotten older, I love having coffee with my wife while reading the Bible because what happens is I'll say something, it'll spark conversation, and I'll learn more about who God is by having a relationship with somebody else. And I think that's part of the encouragement that Paul was talking about in 1 Thessalonians. Uh, he sent somebody there to encourage them with his presence. Being a Christian is not easy. Nope. And we're, we are to encourage one another. Um, bear one another's burdens, um, pray for one another, encourage one another, all those things that Jason was talking about. And it comes down to um, Paul really looks at this church and he says, listen, y'all really need to be loving one another. And we miss that sometimes. You know, we can make the Bible so hard to read and understand. And the, the simple truth is, and Jesus says this, all the law comes down to this, love God and then love your neighbor as yourself. And so when we get those two things and really begin to understand what God is trying to teach us, it is about these relationships that we have with each other and with Him. And if we don't have right relationships with one another, we'll never have the right relationship with Him. Um, been uh, going through a thing that Tony Evans is doing on First John, and he has done a phenomenal job talking about us mm -hmm. abiding in God but then loving each other. And he said, if if you don't love each other, then you're not abiding with God and you can abide with God. But if you're not loving each other, you're really not abiding with God. And so all of that works together. And so, um, you know, loving each other, and I think we have to be careful here, loving each other doesn't mean we like everything about everybody. Um, you know, part of, part of our Christian walk with one another is you know sometimes we have to point out things that aren't good you know sometimes we have to put our arm around somebody and go hey i've noticed that you you've been grumpy lately or i've noticed you've been skipping a lot something going on um 
and that's not always easy but we're not we're not really loving one another if we're not helping each other be better and i think we struggle with that sometimes but real love is is more than just sappy emotional feelings but it's this idea that i'm willing to willing to get in the muck with you and i'm willing to walk through these difficult things with you even man it it can cause a lot of heartache um working with the hope center guys there's a lot of heartache in doing that but there's also a lot of good stuff that comes out of it and you see a lot of these men that change their lives around and so loving one another is difficult but paul says that's what the church has to do what if you could uh use the term care for one another <clears throat> loving one another is, is one another one of those churchy things to me in a way that you can you can use a little bit wrong where it's harder to understand, but just care for people. Most most people I know genuinely care for other human beings. And I don't know that I would say I love everybody <laughs> I know, but I do care for everybody, even if I don't agree with them and stuff. Uh, and that motivates me to want to do, do something for somebody sometimes just because I care as a human being, you know. I, I was thinking that... Uh, it seems to me like if God had intended for us not to be around other people and social with other people, he wouldn't have recorded all the stories about other people and what they went through in the Bible. Because isn't that, isn't that what we get out of the Bible often is uh, we read somebody else's story about what they did and then we try to relate that to our own. And if we were just meant to be on our own, we wouldn't need any of that, would we? It's a rhetorical question. Is that the right way to say that? Rhetorical? <laughs> historical. You know, the, it's a historical question. It's kind of crazy. We were made for a relationship with one another, but sometimes being in relationship with one another provides increased opportunities for us to be sinful. Uh, sometimes we all have that coworker that. Um, you say sinful or simple? Sinful. Sinful. Um, so you know we've all through the course of time had that coworker we're like I cannot stand this person, um, you know just <laughs> here I am <laughs> I'm right here <laughs> uh, you're just like I I cannot stand that person but God still commands us to be with one another and so I think there's something in our growing as Christians that we can't grow apart from one another. Because there's an opportunity when you have that coworker that you don't like to become more like Jesus because of the difficulty, not in spite of the difficulty. You may have a coworker that is just hard to deal with. You don't like him. You don't like being him. Just the name of that person makes your skin start crawling. We, we've all had people like that over the years. But you can actually become more like Christ because of that difficult relationship than you would be by yourself. And you think to yourself, well, if I didn't have that coworker in my life, then things would be a lot better and I wouldn't be sinning all this way. Yeah, you would. What God does in difficulty, even living with one another in hard ways, God burns out the sinfulness in us. He reveals the sinfulness in us and then he, he has the opportunity to correct it in us once we know the sin and are aware of that. And you know, there's no age limit on doing this either. Uh, in Paul talking to Timothy. Timothy was a young man, and he was not like a teenager type young man. He was a young man probably in his 20s. And he said, don't let people look down on you because you're young. And there's no age limit to doing this life with one another, to being an example to other. Doesn't mean you're kind of kicked out of uh, the opportunity to lead by example just because you're young. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we think to ourselves, well, I'm not experienced in that. I, I have no uh, awareness of that. There's no reason that I have to step up and be in leadership. But, man, if you're just following and trusting God, he'll put those opportunities in your place, and you have an opportunity to lead even if you aren't. Well, I, you've used this example before. If you're doing a marital counseling class, do you want to hear from somebody that has had a terrible marriage or do you want to hear from somebody that's had a good marriage you probably want to hear from somebody that has a good marriage because they know how to do things right and so you think to yourself well how can i minister to somebody 
that is going through hard times. I've, I've never been there. I don't know what it's like. Well, you might very well have the answer because you've never gone through some of that stuff as well. So this whole idea that Paul tells Timothy, I want, I want you to be at this church and I want you to encourage them, but also I want you to be an example. There's a reason for that because we don't need to just read about Jesus and all the things that he did in other people's lives. We need to see it in application. We need to see it working. Um, take, for example, you buy somebody a birthday card or you buy some, your wife an anniversary card. People are appreciative of that, but they also want to hear from you. They want to see that you enjoy being with them. You know, being an example is just is just that. It encourages people um, to strive to be better. You know, we've got that silly little phrase here, you know, just tr- Christians trying not to cuss. But other Christians need to hear that because we all struggle with it. Mm-hmm. And if we can be an example to them and go, hey, you know, these guys over there trying not to cuss, I need to do that too. Mm-hmm. Um, we can strive each other on for better things or for worse things. And I think that's part of what we're called to be. If not, why doesn't he, when he saves us, why doesn't he just go ahead and take us home? Yep, exactly. Yep. There's a saying, I don't remember, psychologist or something, uh, you become like the five people that you spend the most time with. So be careful about those five people that you choose. If they're all cussing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'll yeah, probably, probably pick up a bad habit. probably going to cuss a little. When I was growing up on the football team, you know, in Texas, football is an organized religion, uh, just to be honest. Mm-hmm. And most of my classmates and teammates were not saved. And, and there were some things that slipped into my vocabulary yeah. at that time period. And it, was, yeah. it took a while to get those things out of your vocabulary. Mm-hmm. Even though I was, I was Christian going to church Wednesdays and Sundays and – and I was even reading my Bible. It, that stuff slips in there real easy. Mm-hmm. I guess that's part of the uh, thing about being with somebody else too, isn't it? That we were talking about is like it's uh, you're more prone to want to not be a certain way around other people. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, you know it's always entertaining me that the thing about uh, drinking a beer with a meal or wine. You know when you get involved in church circles. You know, we always run into those conversations about ran into so and so at a restaurant and they were trying to hide him, right? Yeah. Something they were drinking or not hide. It's just always entertaining to me those those uh, conversations and situations. Uh, but but you know, I don't know if you. To me, if you feel like you need to hide that, it, it's kind of a, a wake up call. It would be to me that maybe I need to check out why I would feel like I need to hide that. It's if there's something to that. Well, you know. Jesus tells us that you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. There's this reality that when you're doing right things, man, you're free to laugh and have fun as long as you're doing right things. It's when you're not doing right things that you'll feel guilty about it. You'll feel uneasy about it. Uh, And that's not just our conscience, but that's the Holy Spirit that's trying to keep you on target. Again, um, it doesn't have to be some outrageous sin, but just maybe things you don't need to do. Years ago, Susan and I were young married, you know, got in this bad habit of coming home, eating dinner, and watching uh, Married with Children. You know, Al Bundy. I just thought it was yeah. hilarious. Well, it was hilarious. You know, That's why and, you thought that. And but. there were some, some funny parts <laughs> to that. Well, we have Marie, and she's she's come into our world. So mm-hmm. she's a little baby, and she's watched. I remember the night we were sitting around the dinner table, and uh, Susan was dishing out the plates, and I was kind of just picking at her, and I said, why aren't you a little stink bug? And she goes, well, you're Mr. Empty Pants. <laughs> and I knew right exactly where she told. heard that because yeah. Peg had a character that she drew about <laughs> Al called Mr. Empty Pants. And I knew right then, okay, we've got to quit watching. Yeah. we got to quit watching this show. You yeah. know? So, yeah, I mean, that's just being a good example, being around good people, um, you know, it's it helps me out a lot too. Somebody can be a good example as they're sharing their story. You know, of hey, this is why I don't drink anymore. This is why I don't smoke anymore. This is why I don't. Da, da. And they share that, and all of a sudden, it makes you think about it a little different. And go, oh mm-hmm. yeah, okay, that 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 is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And with to quote Spider Man, with great res- uh, power comes great responsibility, right? So, 
part of doing life with one another is you have to realize and recognize the sphere of influence that you have. Mm -hmm. And the greater your sphere of influence, the more responsibility you have to live. Here's the line to live, not just slightly above the line or slightly below, but as far above the line as you possibly can because you influence a lot of people around you. And there may be things that you should you don't struggle with that they struggle with if they see you doing it they're looking to you for a description of what is right and okay reasonable for you to do yep. and you may not struggle with it but they might and you might be leading somebody else to towards something that they're going to struggle with and they shouldn't be doing so you just have to be careful the greater your sphere of influence the more you need to live above board to be a good influence with one another as you're doing life together why do you guys think that um, an unsaved person, friend, wouldn't want to hang around you? I think there's a couple of reasons. Um, one of them, you don't feel like you're good enough. And <laughs> number two, oftentimes you're like, there's a stigma. You're not fun. You don't yeah. know how to enjoy life. Yeah, That's what I was thinking. I I think you can give yourself a bad rap by being too Christian around everybody at times yeah. rather than just being a normal human that's uh, that is a Christian but but I think they feel guilty mm. yeah and when you're yeah. not participating in that and again I go back to um, I don't have to lower my standards to make you feel better about yourself but I try not to judge you and make to try to make you feel bad about yourself but if you feel guilty that's not on me you know um but i i know that's i know that's the reason that some people will be like yeah don't invite them to the party because you know we want to drink and they'll right. look down on us is that why you didn't invite me the other day right that's exactly <laughs> why that's what he told me yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was just wonder. yeah uh you know toward the end of this part of what we do here when we get to here i always like to think about the person who who might be joining us who's not already saved or not already a part of all this and just I always like to think about that person and what their what their reaction is like to but maybe you know, what we've said or we don't know every situation in biblical times but we do know that a large majority of people were drawn to Jesus even if they were living immoral lives mm-hmm so there was something about him that was appealing to them while he never condoned it, celebrated it, said it was okay, don't worry about that. They were still drawn to him. And I think that comes back to you know what Paul's talking about, how do we love people? Um, I think there is a way to love people, be in their, be in their world, but still be salt and light, still be something. There should be something attractive about us jesus was still invited to the wedding in the way that yeah i think michael you know years ago uh, you made a comment in deacons meeting one night you said when you become a deacon just get ready your family's going to call you when they have a crisis yeah you, you look different all of a sudden you look different all of a sudden and you know that's that should be our testimony is that you know what we're not perfect and we don't we don't uh we don't run around wanting to put a scarlet letter on everybody's shirt and tell them how bad they are but at the same time, um, we love them enough to tell them the truth, um, but we don't beat them up with it, you know. So it's a balance. Mm. It definitely is a balance, but especially in the church, gosh, we have a we have a huge responsibility to point people to better things. I suspect that uh, the person that we were just talking about, if they are even hearing this, they're being drawn, whether they know it or not, or they wouldn't be sitting there listening. If that's happening right now, it may not be, but if it is, I would tell you that I believe you're being drawn to this right now. Uh, so you're being invited. Yep. Not by any of us, but you, I mean, you could have happened upon probably a smarter crew of people right here. <laughs> uh, Myself excluded. Yes, except for Jason. Yeah. But I'm just also talking about me and H. But I understand. I believe you're being invited. I really do. I, uh, I just believe you're being invited to listen and consider it so just consider it at one point in time in the new testament there's a story where jesus is telling um there's a marriage supper 
and not and invited a whole lot of people, but there were not enough guests at the party. And so the the father of the bride told him to go out and invite anybody that you find to this party. We're going to have some fun. And if you're listening to this story and you're thinking to yourself, I don't know if Christianity is my cup of tea. I don't know if it's really what I want. Just know that there is a, a God that loves you enough to invite you to the party. He, he's looking for you in the highways and the byways um, in every nook and cranny. He wants you invited to the party. He wants you to know that if you're listening to this right now and you haven't joined the party, that you're invited. And you'll have fun. It's a lot of fun. Three of us right here can testify to that. <laughs> testify. I had to buzz that. It's a church word. You just have to use that buzzer once a episode. You have to get it in there. Yeah. Time. I mean, there is no other purpose in life when you stop and think about it. There is no other purpose in life mm-hmm. than to be in love with your creator. Mm-hmm. And so everybody else on the planet, unfortunately, is miserable because they haven't found their total purpose in life. And... Again, even though Christians have difficult lives, we still have this this hope that lives within us because it's like, you know what? Even if it's a bad day, it's getting better all the time. You win in the end. You win. So, yeah. Um, That's better than not yeah, winning in the yeah. end. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Paul, Paul, who wrote this book, you know, he, he tells them, he says, you know, we – we are proud of you because of the decisions you've made. But then he kind of chastised them. He's like, "Why? Why would you believe anything else? Because there, there is no other hope. There is no other. There is no other path. There is no other way. There is no other truth in this in this existence. Christ and Christ alone is the only person that's going to make you feel right for the first time in your life." Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we look around the table. We all have different gifts, talents, and abilities. We approach life differently, but we all have purpose that we didn't have in our life before Christ. Now, all of a sudden, Michael can be a rebel in Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, Jason can have weird ideas pop in his head in Christ, and I can be a goofball in Christ. You know, we we have different personalities, but our purpose is met in Christ. So, anybody that's not said yes to Him. You're a miserable lot. Look some of us up. We'll help you sign up. That's right. Church people like to sign up. Yeah, we sign you up. It's like the, uh, when you hear the, uh, in fact, at the first of Mike the Baptist, you always hear the airplane take off and then you hear that seatbelt sign. So it's like uh, when you get saved, you're free to roam about the plane. The cabin. The cabin. Speaking of planes... We'll take a break, come back, play in your out. It's a playing game. It's a playing game. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't connecting it. Because. There you go. <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with that, yeah? I was, too. We'll be back. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's time to play America's almost favoritest new game show, Any or Audi, where we challenge our guests to figure out if a phrase we give them is actually in the Bible or out of the Bible. Sharpen your wits, guest. You're about to be in the hot seat of Bible stuff because you're the next contestant on Any or Audi. Here's Mike. Today, folks, on Any or Audi, we're going to do something different. We're going to present like a phrase or something. And one of us is going to do that, and the other two are going to try to guess, is that actually in the Bible or not? Is it an any or an Audi? That's what we're going to do today on any or Audi. What do you think? I think that it's sounds great, good to me. I think it's a great new concept. Pretty plain mm-hmm. and simple. Plain. H is sharp about some of this stuff. He remembers, which is important. <laughs> Remembering is important. Until he asks the question, then all of a sudden I go blind. It's like whiteboard. Do <laughs> you ever walk up a whiteboard and you think, how do I spell God? Gee, yes. I mean, I go blank. It's terrible. Yes, whiteboards are kind of scary. Yep. You know what? I'm an artist. I can paint things and draw things. But if I go to a whiteboard to write words, they're not going to look like words most of the time. There's it's something crazy. happens in writing words. It's just like, I'm better Anyway, back to Jason. Yes, Jason, what do you have for us? You're in the power seat first. I was, uh, I was watching the news the other day, and uh, I'm a big sports guy, so – Deion Sanders popped up in the news, and and his son mm-hmm. Shadur. Uh, I know. I, I think I'm saying that right. I'm not sure, but anyway, something. 
Did you say Schneider? Yeah. No, it didn't slip. No, that's that's that the, dragged. Anyway, he. <laughs> He's getting sued for something Where that Shadur come from. Actually, it's not Shadur. I I don't know. Anyway, I saw the name and I'm like, that is a very unique name. I, I wondered where in the world it came from, and so I, I looked um, and I just trying to figure out where it came from. Okay, Shadur in the Bible or out of the Bible? Oh wow, well, that came out of the left field. Are you sure it's not Shudder? Not shutter. Because <laughs> shutters Shadur. are about no, sh- shutter. He kind of put a little French twang to it or something. Shadur. Shadur. You know, his it's wife such a was unique on here name. last week, and I think she did a she, her, or something. She did some she superhero or something. She-ra? Is that it? she in the Bible? Maybe. Doesn't have anything to do with this, but. I've slept Shadur. since then. Okay. Shadur. It's spelled weird, too. S H E D E U R. He he set us up, H, by going through this whole Dion Warwick thing. I mean, Dion. <laughs> not Dion Warwick Sanders. Sanders thing. Sports. In sports. Not weird. I really care. And then all of a sudden he said it's Shadur in the Bible. Oh, that's Dion's son's name. Yes. I understand why he did it, but I'm oh, okay. it. my mind was going all these other places. And well, well I just wanted you to know where it was coming my, from. I was watching sports. Okay. okay. My initial response is yes. Okay. Because Dion is a very spiritual man. Uh, and would have named his child. Yes. I mean, he played for the Cowboys. He's a very spiritual man. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> he would have to be. I guess. I see. That's a pretty, he's humble. That's pretty perceptive he's that humble. you would pick up on that. You know, he's he's in his, I, I hold it, in his 50s or something. And, and he had his toes amputated, crazy stuff from football, various things. I watched a video of him in his 50s get under i think it was 275 on the bench and just start pumping reps out i, I was like at he's a physical specimen yeah. even at whatever age he is oh, how old is Dion? Yeah, toes took off yeah he had that. some complications from i don't know if it was diabetes or from huh. an injury in football or something i, I can't remember hmm. but you don't use your toes to pump weights do you <laughs> I mean, well, no, it just connected, but it's letting you know that he's shutter. not in perfect health. Okay. But even though he's not in perfect health and he's 56, I, I watched a video of him yeah. and he's 56 years old and he's he's pumping out like it, 275 it on the just bench. It hurts to think about that. It's impressive. Yes. Shadur. You think it's in there, but you know what? He may be drafted this next year. He's a quarterback. He may be drafted first five, ten Oh, Shadur, spots. not Dion. Yeah, not Dion. If you're drafting a 56-year-old man, you're making a bad choice with your draft you probably, pick. Yeah, it's probably going to work. I'm inclined to go with you just because your explanation seems very solid. I think he's, he saw that, and he's like, is that in the Bible? And he found it, and he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get him. We're in any. We're in I'm, any. Yeah, any. It's in there. All right. <laughs> Multiple times. Yes. <laughs> I, I thought that is just the most <laughs> arcane name, but it's in there. Well, it's numbers one five, numbers two ten, numbers seven thirty, numbers seven thirty five, and numbers ten eighteen, and also his other sons Shiloh and Shalomi. Wow, are in the Bible as well. Now Shiloh, I know Shalomi. Shalomi, is that like peace, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> Shalomi, Shalomi. Hey, did you know that? Uh, peace, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's Did you know exactly that, uh, like that Solomon's name is actually Shlomo? <laughs> no. I, here's something I do know. Huh. We won. Woohoo! Yes. Yeah, we did. But here's something I do know. Jason lost both of them no, last no, no. week. No, no, no. Listen to this. Neither of you are going to believe at all what my in or out question is about to be. <laughs> okay. I mean, I think it's going to amaze you. It's, it's amazing me <laughs> <laughs> already. Uh, are we ready? Uh, sure, we maybe. We won. Going to the book of Leviticus. Michael Jackson, now in the power seat. In the power seat. I'm going to the book of Leviticus. I'm going to a specific chapter and some verses. But you know me. I'm prone to not exactly add or subtract to the Bible because the last thing it says in there is don't, don't do, do that. Don't do that. Yep. But just in fun, I'm, I like to... Once in a while, I'll ask you, is a certain thing in the scripture 
or is it not in there? You know, any right. remedy. I don't think y'all are going to believe, believe this when I bring it up. <laughs> that I randomly, just randomly it came to me. In Leviticus chapter 14, there's a lot of talk about uh, cleansing from infectious skin diseases and stuff like that. <laughs> Yes, yes, but this conversation took a turn. Yeah, it did. There's a lot of talk in there about oil and taking oil. And Popeye's girlfriend. No, this is different oil. Olive oil. It's like taking some of the oil and doing this or that with it. But then there's, there's several places where it goes through a little list of things about taking this remaining oil and doing something with it. And it talks about. <laughs> <laughs> this must be good. Well, it's just it's just interesting that it came about today. Uh, it talks about putting oil, and it repeats this in, in a few different places. My question is: <laughs> like, Is everything I'm explaining to you in there, or is part of it not? So I don't know that you've explained anything yet. <laughs> well, I haven't. <laughs> uh, the priest is to put some of the oil remaining. In his palm. Here's the question coming up. <laughs> on the lobe of the right ear. Mm-hmm. Okay. On the thumb of his right hand. My question is, in all three instances where it talks about this, does it also say on the right big toe? Yes. That was quick. Sorry. Yes. No, no, no. So hmm, maybe this does up. it say yeah, Does it say I it in there? It came up because you just talked about Dion and you know his yeah. toes. losing his toes. They also do that with blood from the sacrifice. Do what? Put it on your big toe. Your so you're saying that you're saying that it's an earlobe, thumb, and toe. Yeah. The, does it say the right big toe? That's the question. Is that an any? Yes. Uh, he sounds pretty confident. I, he I, sounds very confident. Yeah. I think he's right though. I, I would go with that. I would go with any. That's it? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I'm glad I spent a long time <laughs> setting it up because this didn't take any time. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. It's My an bad. Any. It's an any. You're right. Yeah. But I screwed so it up so bad last week that I had to come strong you were, you this you week. You needed a win, didn't you? <laughs> I did need a win. But it, was, it struck me as funny. And it, it strikes me as funny that your conversation came out about the toes and then this just happened to be my in your eye. But it struck me funny when I kept reading the right big toe. Yeah. It... it blatantly says that multiple times interesting yeah and when they're doing uh the sacrifices as well they they dip it in the blood and they'll put it on the right earlobe the right um. thumb and the right okay i'm fixing to, fix to blow y'all's mind okay great fixing to blow your mind so y'all know my dad has a alpha gal problem can't eat beef pork blah blah, blah. i've had a dairy problem for years mm -hmm. so there's a new uh chiropractor in white house who does acupuncture and one of his claims is he can get rid of uh, allergies. So I went up there and saw him. Oh, I need to see him today. <laughs> no, I went up there and saw him, and literally he tests you by putting something in your left hand and trying to push your right hand down, and he does all this stuff, and then he got in my ear and found a place, and he said, right there, and he put a pin in my ear. And, and we're talking about it, and the guy goes, it's not voodoo. He said, I'm a Christian. It is Chinese medicine, but I'm a Christian, da 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 It's a natural healing. And I asked him, and he said, your feet, your hands, and your ears really are receptacles, and it's the right one. They don't do that in the left ear. They don't put a pin in the left ear. It's always in the right ear. Interesting. And there's some kind of electrical current, because when I was holding, so mine was dairy, so I'm holding, and it's a... It's the weirdest thing. So I'm holding this glass bottle, like a little perfume, like you used to get cologne in the mail. Mm -hmm. I'm holding that in my hand, and he's got this ohm meter in my ear. And, dee, 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 and that's where he put the pen. That is weird. Isn't that weird? I had so some, uh, when we start talking about, why would God say the right ear, the right thumb, and the right toe? Maybe he knew something about that. Maybe. He might have even designed the body that wow. it was put on. I just, Coincidence. I'm telling you, this is a fun educational program. Absolutely. Uh, and I thought it was just a silly big toe question. I had some neurological things done one time. They were trying to understand 
<laughs> Not to say Did they come to any conclusions? Yeah, luck, but they were where that hamster ran. They were putting these shock things and pins and stuff, and just you know, like toes. Yep. It, it was interesting. Did not know this. Yep. Hmm. Allergies, huh? Allergies. Yeah, I'm ate up with them today. So maybe I'll go see that guy. You don't have to speak Chinese to go up there, do you? Not at all. He speaks redneck. Uh, hey, one one day I want to take a camera and the three of us will go together and film it. There's a <laughs> there's an Amish guy up in Oh, he looks in Kentucky. your eyes. Yes, and tells you what's wrong with you. I think we should go up there as Southern Baptist boys and say, "Read us," <laughs> just to see what happens. I think it'd be good film. <laughs> Except I don't think they can be on film, can they? We may have to like hold a black piece of poster board in front of his face the whole time. But I know Amish don't like technology, but the uh, what's the other one? Mennonites. Mennonites. Mennonites do. I think this guy's Amish. I think he's straight up Amish, so he probably wouldn't want to be on camera. But anyway, is he living in an Amish paradise? <laughs> I don't know. He's looking at people. It's a reference to a song. It's a parody, it's, it's a parody song. song. Oh. There's a a oh. Grammy award winning song, "Gangsters Paradise," and Weird Al did a amish paradise parody of it so i don't get out so the movies i don't know about so i would have like thought that. that would have been right up your alley no yeah. all right no my alley's uh <laughs> kind of a back alley <laughs> <laughs> we'll just we're gonna take there. a break before <laughs> one of us says something yes. and then we'll come back to you bye oh wow what a great contestant and a fine sport today on any or audi america's almost favorite new game show Study up, future guest people. You're next in the hot seat for Any or Audi. Hey, I'm glad you joined us today. Uh, it's always fun. It's fun educational. It's educational. It's a little spiritual. It is, though. Actually, it does get a little bit that way sometimes. And people are spiritual creatures. So it's okay. Correct? Anyway, we hope you come back. Uh, and join us again and like I said soon we will have a token lay person on there and, uh, and our first one I think is going to be our friend named Lana I don't think you will want to miss it it's just a guess but it's a good guess and I'm right so Jason Riccardi thanks again it's good times always good always uh, always good always interesting to see what rattles around and rolls out of that head up there and down that beard and then out into the microphone <laughs> I have been getting a lot of things stuck in my beard lately, and my daughters keep pointing that out. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, I can see where things could get lost <laughs> in that. Hey, Steve Jones. Hey. Always good. Happy Father's Day to everybody. Yes, it is, isn't it? And yep. uh, is or was or whatever the day is. But anyway, Tomorrow. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, <laughs> it was good. Okay, we'll see everybody next time. Remember, folks, we're just Christian people. Trying. Not. To cuss. To cuss. To cuss. That was totally unscripted right there. <laughs> Can tell it. <laughs> See you next time. Mike the Baptist.